I'm sure most of you are aware of the recent television special that claimed to give an honest, candid, and revealing look into the private life of one of the world's most successful and controversial celebrities, Michael Jackson. The revelations were explosive. The ratings were enormous. But Michael has claimed that what TV journalist Martin Bashir presented was a twisted and edited construction of scandal and innuendo, not a true representation of the interviews that actually took place. In the next two hours, we're going to give you an opportunity unprecedented in the history of television. We're going to show you footage that was never intended to be broadcast. As much as I do not speak about my family, I will. Right now. For the first time, Michael's ex-wife speaks out in public. My kids don't call me mom because I don't want them to. You'll find out what really happened during the astonishing incidents with his children in Germany. In the end, I've seen you know better. people that flip their kids up in the air and do somersaults and catch them. To be honest with you, I think, wait another four or five years, the kids will come in front of a camera and they will defend their daddy. You'll hear about Michael's childhood. One of the things uh, I can see this man tried to do, he tried to, to pin something on me where I was real brutal. You'll find out how Michael really feels about his father. He doesn't know this, but I walk in the room and his presence will be there and I'm thanked. You'll hear about Michael's surgery that the other special didn't mention. The total top of his head caught fire right in front of my eyes. You'll hear the truth behind Michael's children and their disguises. Michael's very proud of his children. I'm the one who's terrified. You'll go behind the rumors of the Neverland Ranch. I never did. I was spit my wrist in front of the And find out how those rumors have driven a family from their home. Gavin called me. He was crying on the phone. He went in gas station. The kids in gas station, they start kidding. Oh, you are the kid doing this with Michael. You slept in Michael. They ruined this kid's life. You'll hear from the people closest to Michael. I've heard um, someone say on the television that no one should be allowed behind those gates at Neverland, especially true. the children. They don't even know what they're talking about. Plus, a surprise revelation from the man behind the Michael Jackson interviews. There'll be a lot of controversy about this. It's a tabloid. So well, you're beyond this. I know. Respect it. Well, comes. all tonight on the Michael Jackson interview, the footage you were never meant to see. Hosted by Maury Povich. With Mr. Bashir's full knowledge, Michael had his own behind-the-scenes camera documenting the major interviews. The quality of the audio and video may be a bit raw at times, but it will enable you to see and hear the interviews as they actually happen, and will allow you, the viewing audience, to draw your own conclusions. And while Michael Jackson has provided this footage to us, he has absolutely no control over the editorial content of this program. But who is Martin Bashir? And how did he get an exclusive interview with one of the most reclusive pop stars the world has ever known? In 1995, this little-known British journalist caused an uproar when his sensational interview with Princess Diana revealed details of her extramarital affair. Since then, he has scored interviews with some of England's most notorious newsmakers, becoming somewhat of a celebrity himself. Martin, a quick word for the evening news. His interview with Jackson was, as he put it, a request to show me the real man. But show me everything. Make nothing off limits. Michael agreed. And the first interview was scheduled for the summer of 2002. In these photos of one of Bashir's interviews with Jackson, you can see the camera that captured the footage you were never meant to see. It's mounted right there on the light stand. This is the view it was capturing at the last interview. And this is the shot from the very first interview at Neverland. The man adjusting the lens. Now this is on. Okay. So can we have silence in the house? Yeah. Is Jackson's own documentary cameraman. Well, I just wanted to clarify that um, is not, it, it was not a secret video. Because right now they're saying that we were secretly videotaping him. But... That's not the truth. Uh, Mr. Bashu saw me, you know, hooking up the camera. And, um, <clears throat> you know, everybody saw the camera out there and we were just rolling it. We usually do documentary on every, you know, things that Mr. Jackson does. Do you think that your success has actually made people turn against you? 
the bigger the star, the bigger the target. And the more popular I became, the more rumors that were created, which none of which were true. I mean, the moment I started breaking the all-time records of the biggest selling albums of all time, they called me weird overnight, strange, wacko, you know, um, they said I'm a girl, um, homosexual, um, uh, he wants to buy the elephant man bones, he sleeps in a hyperbaric chamber, none of that stuff is true. All completely made up. Well, I've seen it's where you all sleep. all a lie. I've seen where you sleep, exactly. and it's not a hyperbaric chamber. I sleep in a bed. I mean, people would be so surprised how normal and simple the way I live. Most people would have a very hard time thinking Michael Jackson's life was normal or simple. Maybe it's that ranch north of Santa Barbara, California, the 3,000 acres he calls Neverland. Neverland is an extraordinary, a breathtaking, a stupendous, an exhilarating, an amazing place. I can't gather together words to describe Neverland. What inspired you to make a home like this? What inspired me? It was so easy because it was me being myself, creating things that I love. And what I love, kids happen to love, or the child that lives inside, the adult, happens to love. You know, it is so easy because um, I'm just putting behind the gates everything I never got to do when I was a kid. Do you have regrets about the way your life has been? Somewhat. And what do you regret? I was really little, uh, around 11 and 12. I was under contract with Motown and, and I would have to go to the recording studio. I had to go and make these albums because the summer tour was right around the corner and right across the street from the recording studio was a ballpark and I could hear the kids you know the roar of the crowd and playing and catching ball and having fun and playing tennis and some of those times I so passionately wanted to just go over there and just play a little bit and not go to the recording studio and sing just to, you know, have some fun with the kids. And I couldn't. And people say, why is he always with children? Well, I was raised in a world with adults. I, when kids were playing in, in bed, sleeping at night, I was up doing clubs. I was doing club dates, three in the morning. The striptease would come on after us. You know, I was, uh, we were performing, and we we weren't we didn't have friends. My brothers were like my friends, but we we worked, we worked, we worked. There was no Christmas, there was no birthdays, and we were very strict of our witnesses. So I'm compensating. Nature make make sure that I compensate for the lost. So when you come behind my gate, you'll see amusement park, you'll see animals, you'll see everything I never got to do. There's candy everywhere. <laughs> it's fun. While Bashir and his crew were here at Neverland, they got to witness what has become an almost weekly experience. Busloads of children, some from the inner city, some orphaned, some terminally ill, but all of them escaping their reality to spend the day at Michael Jackson's creation. I feel totally at home with them. I can talk to them one on one because they don't judge you. You know, they're not looking for anything. They just want to have some fun. You know, and that's the same with myself. And I can connect to that. You know, I can understand that. And the fact that um, I missed out on so much as a, as a child. As soon as they come in the room, for me the room lights Watch up. This. I like the sound it makes. <laughs> Is they're really funny. Oh my God, they're funny. Didn't one of them say something funny to you yesterday about? Yeah, one one of the boys said to me. He said uh, he saw all the rides and all the amusements, and he said, uh, Michael Jackson 
you own all of this? I go, yeah. He said, you paid for all of this? I said, yeah, I did. And you still have money left over? That's what, exactly what he said to me. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. He goes, I can't believe it. He said, I can't believe it. That's exactly what he said. He was amazed that I still had money afterwards. <laughs> We're Make-A-Wish staff members, and we are escorting all the Wish families that came to meet Michael. It's just great to be a part of it and see how happy they are. Everything is free, theater, amusement park, uh, whatever they want to do, they can do it. But it's not free to you. It's cost you millions of millions dollars. Millions a year, yeah, millions. But, you know... I get it all back when I see them smile. Sugar attack right now. Peter Pan. I've been in the house. I've seen the statues outside the house. Why is Peter Pan a figure of such interest and inspiration to you? Because Peter Pan, to me, um, represents something that's very special in my heart. You know, he represents youth, childhood, never growing up, magic flying, everything I think that children um, and wonderment and magic, what it's all about. And to me, I just have never, ever grown out of loving that or thinking that it's very special. You don't want to grow up? No, I am Peter Pan. Are you like a Michael Jackson? I'm Peter Pan by heart. Do you think it would be true to say that you found friendship and inspiration in children that you haven't been able to find in adults. That's absolutely the truth. Really? Yes. Yes. I haven't been betrayed or deceived by children. Adults have let me down. That picture with the little girl, oh my God. The, G the German one? So sweet. The German one, right? Yeah. She was so cute. I want it bigger. You want it? What is it? It's kind of that, that one on the left just coming yeah, out. Yeah, so just two inches lower or two inches just as Michael, yeah, do you think I could way. do with a makeup artist? Michael, do you think you could chill off a little bit? That's great, thank you. <laughs> I look fine. You look fine. I'm going to look stinky. Uh, that, that's a nice But mind. you don't look stinky. What are you talking about? How's that? Thank you, mate. Lovely. Just got this one in the corner of the shop. Because you, you see how they're Because we want to be white. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. That was owned by the hotel. You've just torn the page out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. This is so sweet. Show me. Oh, the picture. Yeah, it's lovely. Why do you love these pictures? Yeah, sure. that's okay. It feels my heart bliss. Oh God, really? I honestly didn't tell you straight up. My room is just decorated. I know, I've been there. Yeah. Even your computer's got pictures, isn't it? Yes. On the on the screen saver. Yeah. Going. Okay, we're ready. Wonderful. No matter how well, your, how good your intentions are, there's always some jerk, some mean-spirited person to try to bring you down. And you, all you want to do is bring some love and some joy and you know and they're so quick to hate and to judge and to be cruel and mean and you know it, it just shows that mankind can be very ugly and cruel it really does it brings out the ugly side cool well That's done That's really absolutely yeah brilliant yeah. Well done. Big butt.